math. Thank you very much, Mr. Shaker. I just remembered I had to actually do a rebuttal. As a result, I only had time to think of five questions for this. <laughs> First of all, how do we get the elephants here? Second of all, um, what is 17 times 5? Third of all, can <laughs> elephants live together peacefully? Fourth, do you need a piano? <laughs> Light didn't shine? <laughs> First off, how do we get the elephants here? Magic. Kelsey covered this. She went into great detail about the resources that people do to get that of programs here. We're going to talk to J.K. Rowling. She outlined the Harry Potter thesis. We'll be fine on that respect. Side government is just being pessimistic. <laughs> Moving on. What is 17 times 5? Jordan is correct. 17 times 5 is 85. Prime, prime, not prime. Technically, this is supposed to be not prime. We're going to overlook the fact that he doesn't know mathematical properties <laughs> because 85 does still lead to Euclid because 5 is the fifth letter of the fifth number and E is the fifth letter of the alphabet. Euclid does lead to Greece, which leads to Rome, which leads back to elephants. Why does this matter? Because the elephants were very, very sad when the Romans defeated them. The elephants don't forget. And because we are the Western liberal democracy, we know what is best for the elephants. We know how they will not be angry at us anymore. And that is by, you know, showing them our way of life. That's why we're going to bring them over to us. Third. Third? Third. Can elephants coexist together? Yes. Multiculturalism is good. People can only get along when they're forced to mess with each other. We stayed at Isaac's aunt's house this weekend. She has two cats. They're different kinds of cats. They are able to live in the same house. They don't fight. They have wildly different lifestyles. One goes around and licks people on the face and crawls into bed with Michael Warren. The other is fat and white and just lies there all day. They still manage to coexist in the same living space. We don't think there's any reason African and Indian elephants can't do the same thing. Fourthly, do you need a piano? I don't, but maybe some of you out there do. We've already said on side, pro side opposition. <laughs> We've already said that you don't need a full piano, you just need a third of the piano. Side government accepted that, but they got really angry about the fact that elephants don't contain wood. We would agree elephants don't contain wood. Neither do they contain acrylic, however, and we know that acrylic is a far better sounding board material than wood could ever be for pianos, so we're not concerned about that. We will use acrylic for these pianos. Most importantly of all, the final question of this debate that side opposition has clearly won, upon, won on with our fabulous motion today is the elephant in the room to steal a line from Sasha's speech. <laughs> Lichtenstein? Oh, shit, it's an awkward rebuttal. I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, I'm ready. Mr. Speaker, broadly, this debate has come to three questions. The first question is, who are the elephants? The second question, why? are the elephants. The third question, what is the relationship between man and the state? <laughs> now, elephants are awesome. Now, who are the elephants? The elephants are African elephants and Indian elephants. Awesome, granted. But African elephants especially are dangerous and difficult to control. A male bull African elephant essentially spends his entire life in a state of testosterone-induced rage. <laughs> now, we are hoping to hand these, these all oh, out. Wow. We are hoping to, now, we are hoping to hand beasts that are intelligent, awesome, rapid, strong, who never forget <laughs> to human beings, and we are hoping to make some sort of alliance between the African elephant and the Indian elephant. Now, this is both a question of who and why, because doesn't side opposition realize that they are handing elephants the key to, to undo the sins of the past, to undo our victory of Rome, and to take over the world? <laughs> yeah. Side opposition is handing elephants the key to world domination. And that is something I don't know. I don't think the side opposition has considered that we, as a human race, have an interest in keeping the elephants down. 
And that does mean keeping the elephants apart. But even so, who are the elephants? The elephants want to be kept apart. Indian African and, Al and African elephants have different concerns. There are different elephant demographics. And, they, and it may be true that they're all elephants, but they're different elephants. And they're elephants that want to be kept apart. Frankly, I see side opposition enforcing strange breeding programs, which the elephants do not want, <laughs> and which will ultimately only build the resentment that they're eventually going to use when they overthrow their human overlords. Because quite frankly, I am not going to be taking care of five elephants. Now this brings me to, what is the relationship between man and the state? Now, if, now the state here has said that we have magic. If we have magic, why do we even need five elephants? Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, we should be using the magical resources of the 17 people in this room for innumerable other uses. Why, why don't we simply use our magic to say, make a new planet for the elephants themselves? Segregation? Really? <laughs> well, presumably it'd be a magic. We can establish portals which will allow them to go between our world and theirs. But quite frankly, that's a false dilemma. <laughs> The role of the government, of our government, is not to provide for 85 elephants. The role of our government is to provide for the citizens of 206. And the citizens of room 206 do not want five elephants, do not need five elephants. And frankly, I want to see the resources, the magical resources that will be used in deploying these five elephants for other saner pursuits. And that, Mr. Speaker, is why Bob's prop case must fall. <laughs>